Hello, valued viewers. I hope you're all doing very well. And just a quick reminder that the Super Thanks button is on. It's on the taskbar near the Like button. And any contribution toward the channel's efforts is greatly appreciated. And also, any contribution, $20 or more, gets their own custom video. And you just go to the comments and tell me what you want. And I do it as a priority over any project that I have going on. Now let's get on with the video. The Atchison, Topeka, and Santa Fe Railroads 1158 class comprised of two 2662 articulated steam locomotives built in 1910 by the Baldwin Locomotive Works. Several publications I've come across in the past refer to these as mogul malleys, but I prefer to call them prairie malleys simply because of the lead and trailing trucks. Moguls were 260 wheel arrangement, where uh, prairies were 262 wheel arrangement, so you get my meaning here. So anyhow, the 1158 class were jointed boiler locomotives, which was an experiment confined to the Santa Fe. The railroad considered it successful enough to build four of the later 3300 class locomotives with flexible boilers, but both class classes are scrapped by the 1920s. And folks, I have to tell you that th this particular locomotive type actually brought a little bit of comic relief, at least in my mind, and here's why. So the very first thing to consider in my little bit of comedy here is the year is 1910. And so Santa Fe engineers want to make a flexible articulated malle, right? The ones, you know, that can uh, easily get around curves and whatnot. So I got to thinking if the Santa Fe engineers at that time really knew how close they were to the solution, because the, obviously we know today that the solution was to hinge the front bogey and make the front bogeys flexible so, you know, to get around tight curves and whatnot with this, these super giant locomotives. And in fact, I wouldn't be in the least surprised if there was Murray, you know, the junior engineer designer there at Santa Fe that has said, uh, uh, boss, wouldn't it be easier just to hinge the front uh, bogies or something like that? You know, and as usual, a guy like that usually gets silenced because, you know, he doesn't know anything. You know, that guy. So that's just my little bit of comedy that, you know, that I was thinking of when it come to this idea. Okay, so a jointed boiler locomotive was a variant of the Malay articulated locomotive in which a flexible coupling was introduced midway along the length of the boiler casing, and this allowed the boiler to bend laterally when the locomotive was on a curved track. In all, six such locomotives, all of the 2662 wheel arrangement, were built for the Santa Fe Railroad between 1910 and 1911. The first one built was number 1157, and it was assembled by the Atchison, Topeka, and Santa Fe in their Topeka shops from two to six twos, and all the rest were built new by the Baldwin Locomotive Works. So again, where some of these publications call them Malay moguls, I don't know. In a conventional Malay, the rigid boiler is fixed to the rearmost of the two engine frames, with the front of the boiler supported on a sliding bearing over the pivoting front engine such, as, such that when the locomotive transverses a curved track, the front end, or the smoke box end, the boiler overhangs toward the outside of the curve. So this jointed boiler idea with the front half rigidly fixed to the front engine eliminated this overhang. This new design was intended to reduce track wear, especially on curves where the outer rail, rail carried a greater load, and to improve the riding characteristics of the locomotive itself. So, as built, the two boiler sections served different functions. The rearmost section with the firebox generated and superheated the system. The forward section contained a reheater for low-pressure steam serving the front engine, feed water heater, and the smoke box. The large flexible joint in the boiler casing carried only combustion gases at or slightly below atmospheric pressure. Steam and water to the front section were delivered by pipes external to the main casing with pivoting elbows and high-pressure steam lines and hoses and water lines as flexible connections. As built, two designs of the large flexible coupling were used. The first, a double ball joint assembly consisting of cast iron sleeves, fitted one within the other and provided with compression straps to keep the joints airtight while allowing lateral movement. The second was a bellows joint similar to the Constantina and that consisted of several pairs of concentric tapered steel rings, each riveted to its neighbor along alternating inside and outside edges. This design proved less successful because coal cinders would accumulate in the folds and force the seams open when the uh, bellows were compressed. These were soon replaced with a ball joint type. 
So basically, while the Santa Fe was working under 2662 Malay locomotives, the Baldwin Locomotive Works was also building two locomotives with jointed boilers for the Santa Fe, which was the 1158. And that featured the double ball joint design in the Santa Fe 1159, which had the bellows joint. The locomotives were combined as a Santa Fe 1158 class. While the two locomotives were put into service when received by the Santa Fe, there was not enough information known at the time for the railroad to justify placing a larger order. Instead of producing more locomotives in the 1158 class, the railroad instead elected to have a small number, four to be exact, of their 3300 class built with the jointed boilers. Santa Fe 1158 and 1159 had respectable careers for the railroad, but both were scrapped by 1930. The examples of the 3300 class did not survive long either. Ultimately, the railroad realized that the design did not come even close to producing the benefits that the company had hoped to see, especially given the cost of building and maintaining these lo locomotives. While well, some look at the 1158 class in the same light as other experimental locomotives such as the Pennsylvania Railroad 6100, others had no problem treating the design as a failure. And this is the article that Santa Fe historian E.D. Worley had stated that these locomotives were basically uh, mechanical abortions. And as I mentioned in yesterday's um, 10 worst steam locomotives, the fact that these designs of the um, flexible boilers were limited to just the Santa Fe and only a total of seven locomotives of, of these types were built, that's the best indication that the locomotive wasn't very good. And with that, the following specifications apply to the Santa Fe 2662 jointed boiler locomotive, the number 1157. So I'm going to go with the original design as far as the specifications are concerned. Okay, so obviously the railroad who built it was the Santa Fe Railroad. The year built was 1910. The locomotive used Walsh's valve gear. The axle load of the locomotive is unknown. The weight on the drivers was 304,300 pounds. The engine weight itself was 370,200 pounds. The tender fully loaded weighed 164,500 pounds. The total engine and tender weight combined was 534,700 pounds. The water capacity was 9,000 U.S. gallons. The fuel capacity was 14 tons of coal. And the main driver diameters were 69 inch diameter main drivers. The boiler pressure was 220 psi. The high pressure cylinders were two at 24 inches by 28 inches, and low pressure cylinders were two at 38, 38 inches by 28 inches. The tractive effort was 62,491 pounds, and the factor of adhesion was an outstanding 4.87. The firebox area was 195 square feet. The grade area was 53.50 square feet. And finally, the combined heating surface was 5,005 square feet. And with that, I shall wrap up the video. And, and I will thank you for watching the video. If you enjoyed the content today, please hit the like button. And also, if you've not subscribed, please hit the, the subscribe button as both features help the channel grow immensely. And don't forget that any contributions toward the channel's effort is greatly appreciated. And if you don't want to do it that way, you could always visit our print shop at Nickel Plate Limited on Etsy.com. And we thank you once again.